guys, so today we're taking the uh, front rotors off and the pads because they're pretty much shot. As you see, uh, the caliper just locked right up and as it's driving down the road, it broke free. But um, there's very little meat left on this, so it, it, was, it was only a matter of time. But uh, the other side, actually looks pretty dang good um, that's when I noticed that there was a problem because on this side it was sticking a little bit hanging up but when you press on the brake a little bit and it would let off well when you would you would uh, park the car go in reverse and then drive off it would be fine but when it started you know drawing some heat it would just just hang up and stick well eventually just did that which I knew they were going to do that anyways but anyways tools that you need is a quarter inch allen key some type of breaker bar put it in there and you first do the SP which means you spray it WD-40 or whatever you got on hand and then you pray on it that's what SP means and then hopefully it don't break wow now I did let that soak overnight which I recommend everybody doing it's still usable now, on to this. Take a chisel, take a hammer. Now, oh, come on. Now, watch it, because there, there is this piece, and there's also a, uh, it, it's a, um, not a cotter pin it's a um, uh, shim it's in between here make sure you don't lose that right there Okay, these are the pieces that you need. Now, I'm going to put these on the buffing wheel and I'm going to clean them up. I'll do that later. Then you take your screwdriver, put her in between the, uh, the, uh, the uh, pad and the rotor. And then you push it this way. And it'll pop right off. Yeah, usually it does. Ah, it's being a little stubborn. You'll have that. And just tap her off. It'll come off. behind here Ooh, see that that cylinder broke yeah let's see how bad these pads are yeah that pad's gone look at that that, that's 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 done. <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> look, thank goodness I wasn't going too fast. I was doing about yeah, 40, 35 miles an hour. 
cruising down the road. <laughs> Thank goodness. Look at that. That's bad. Yes. Okay. Now, take the lid off here. Or the dust cap. Gonna be a little bit stubborn. There we go. Clean in there. All this gets all this stuff. All this. Great dust and grime is away from it, and then it should pop off. All right, hold on, guys. Okay, we finally got it moving. Somebody whacked this pretty good. I don't know why. Probably because they didn't have the right tool. Good job. The tool I have it. It sits in here, cradles, and then you hit it, and then it'll pucker this out. I made that on the lathe a while back, and I did the. Uh, truck come on I might go get a new cover, I might not. We'll see how well this goes back on. Okay, there is your powder pin. And this is your cover for the, the nut. And that nut is a one and one eighth. At least it should be anyways, we'll find out. Anyways, let's take this off. Now, unless it's a dire emergency, never use the old cotter pin. Never. Like I said, unless it's a dire emergency. If it's a dire emergency, then use it. That don't look in bad shape, but like I said, got a new one. Ain't got to worry about it. Alright, take this off. Got stuck on there for some reason. I had to tap it. Ah. Here we go. All 
All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> now, remember, always put the smaller end that way. You don't want to go this way. You go this way, you'll wonder why it's never fitting. Yeah, that's junk. <laughs> Look at that. That's a that's done. Oh, that's some grooves right in here too. Yeah, that's that's done. Okay. Now I have bearings for this, but. I'm going to just tell you, take a screwdriver, go all the way around the edge, then eventually it'll pop up the seal, then you pull out the bearing, and then that's it, if you want to save the bearing or not. I have new bearings, so I'm going to use those. Okay, let's see how bad this shaft is. Feel around this. No, I don't look bad at all. Let's see, it's pretty dang good. That's good. Didn't damage nothing there. That's good. Yeah. Now, these fine threads here, you always want to make sure they're okay. You don't want to muck them up. That's good. Yeah, it looks all right. Okay. Uh, now we're going to get the new um, shoes on. And before we get the new shoes on, we're going to get the new caliper installed, which that's going to be a delightful fun. I'll show you how to do that. And then after that, we'll get the new rotor installed I'll show you how to pack the bearings and that's it so I'll be right back all right here's a new one right here looks good and they also give you new screw and new clips And the new, uh, oh, I forget what you call this thing, uh, um, the piece that keeps for the shim, I forget what they call it. It's part of the caliper. But, anyways, let's get her installed. So, what you gotta do is you put the side here for the brake line hose here which we'll find out if that's going to be a SP or not I probably am going to spray and pray it pray on it so how it works if you guys don't know is if you look inside that hole there the fluid goes in and then it pushes on the cylinder that's what makes the brakes up. and then when you don't use it the fluid goes back out and then it retracts so that's that's how it works real simple but it took uh, 100 about 100 years to figure out so I say over that but anyways let's uh let's get this off all right, hold on. Okay, what you'll need is a 5 8 Put it right there. Now take a hammer. See, 
this is this is where the problems lie. Yep, there we go. Broke free. Okay. Okay, now new one. Quickly. This is quickly. Why so give me the wrong thread? This the wrong thread, I'll be ticked. I will not be happy if this oh. Alright guys, hold on, I'll be back. Okay guys, got her on here. So all they gotta do is just bring her home. Gotta put shoes on. I'll be back. Uh, gotta go get them. All right, got the brakes here, so let's uh, open them up. Okay, if you look at the brakes, it's like a oddball one pad. This is the right one. These are what go to the Mustang Two, Maverick. Um, Pintos, Mercury Bobcat, um, lots of stuff that Ford did. So, where it goes is right here. Alright. And we're going to put the other one on. So, here we go. Okay guys, this is how it looks. Alright. We're going to get the rotor on here. And we're going to put the um, bearing on here and everything and get her going. Okay, 
Okay, you got the wheel bearing here. And you get your favorite grease. I use some Valvoline. Dip her right in there. Coat her really good, and then you just send her home. Make sure you got a rag, wipe your hands off. This this gets messy. There we go. Okay. Oops. Get that off of there. Okay. That's supposed to look like that. Then you get your seal. Which in our case, the seal that came off of the old one. That's pretty much shot. So we got a brand new one. You should always use a new seal anyway. Like I said, unless it's a dire emergency. Just like that. Now we install her. Get this out of the way. Check that out. Now you get your other bearing here, which we're going to use the old one because it's in pretty good shape. Dunkery mare. You know, just like Play Doh. Or if you're a Ghostbuster kid, slime. And remember, taper side goes forward. And there we go. Now we got a little bit of a mess on that. See that there is a notch. That notch goes in this slot. Now, if you don't have it in that slot, it ain't going in. Now you put the bolt back on her. when you tighten her down that will also tighten on the bearings which will basically torque them down here we go
we are good to go. Now, put your cover back on. Now what that cover does is it, as soon as you put that cotter pin on there, this cover's making it so that that nut ain't gonna want back out. So it's safety feature basically. So remember, not use your old cotter pins. I'll be right back and we're gonna get a new one. So perfect, brand new. So, give it a little tap. I do bending them wise. Spread it apart. So bend it over. My hand on one side. And then I peen it. Peen it over. Now if it ain't straight like that, you can always end it back like that. There we go. That'll be straight now. get it on here right well, what will happen the dust cover won't go on <laughs> so you always want to get it on there right otherwise you'll be fighting with your dust cover wondering why is it not going on it's all because you didn't peen it over right cover time. Now, like I said, I have a tool for this. I'll be right back. Might look strange, but believe me, this works. Put it over like that. pads. I'll be right back. Okay guys, got these clips here. This is how you put them on. Now, you got the old pad. Hopefully there's one still on there that way you can have a reference point. If you don't know how they're supposed to go on. 
the flat spot is supposed to be on top where the pad is. And then the curved spot is on the bottom. So we'll put the other side on and then we'll install them. Be right back. Okay guys, as you see, I have the uh, shim in place here and the bracket that holds it all together, I have it set up. So we're just going to take a hammer, maybe this one, not sure, and um, drive her home. Um, the best way to do it, I found is to first start it and push up on your caliper and then drive it home now it's going to take a while so i'm not going to bore you but you get the picture you just drive it to that spot where the opening the hole is that was the thread so you can put the screw in so uh, i'll be back all right, a couple more taps. There we go. Now, we'll use the uh, new bolt. Uh, oh, it's got red lock on it. Very nice. Head on there. Watch the new bolt. All right, I need my Allen key. Nope, not working. Here we go. That's it. Okay, now we gotta bleed the brakes, which I'll be on another episode. And uh, that's it. So that's how you put the brakes on the Mustang 2 or whatever you got at home. Uh, of course, the calipers are gonna be different than what you got at home, but the uh, rotor should be about the same. So that's it, guys. Later.